So today we're going to be talking about Denis Villeneuve's film Sicario, shot by Roger Deakins, starring Benicio Del Toro, Emily Blunt, and Josh Brolin. It came out last year, 2015, but um, it was my second favorite film of the year. Yeah, it's an awesome movie. Highly unrecognized. Whenever I try and talk to people about this movie, no yeah, one seems like, to know. What are you talking about what? No, no one seems to know what the hell I'm talking Sicario, about. Sicario. What does this, that even mean? This, what? Well, it means hitman. Yeah. In Espanol. Yeah. Uh, and you, we get introduced to the hitman at some point, but he's Benicio del Toro's character, essentially Alejandro. Um, Alejandro. In the but, white person. In, in the white, white, white and yeah. Alejandro. Alejandro is really good in this one. Um, we digress. Movie's fantastic. Not enough people have seen this movie. So Emily Blunt is the uh, central protagonist. She plays a um, a, a SWAT agent, I want to say, a, a SWAT F- enforcer. FBI. FBI. Yeah, right. she's she's an FBI agent that is you know working, um, you know, as kind of like the watchdog for a gr- a, a special DEA mm-hmm. task force to kind of be able to report back all the legal and illegal things you know taking place basically be the eyes of the fbi during this uh this crusade to track down this major drug kingpin uh in mexico Mm -hmm. you know for the cartels i just i know that benicio del toro's character refers to refers to it as if we could kill him it would be like finding a vaccine yeah which is a really good way of illustrating it Mm -hmm. very simple terms right so josh brolin's character he's kind of this like this like scummy rough and tumble guy and he wears sandals around and he's just like yeah whatever man mm-hmm. but then at the same time he's kind of a badass so he's, he's a very interesting character he's evil yeah. you know you you get a vibe like he knows more than he's letting on the whole every time he opens his mouth he's only feeding you just enough information to keep you enticed keep you motivated um you know for for emily blunt's character to kind of keep her in the dark but mm-hmm. keep bringing her along and we find out later you know, she has to be there because they needed yeah, her. Yeah, he just needed her to sign They just paper. needed her to sign a piece That's of it. paper saying That's everything it. they were doing was, you know, on the level. When, uh, spoiler, everything they were doing was not so on the level. They were doing a bunch of things. Some shady, some some, shady some, stuff. Some shady stuff. They were, you know, killing people, doing things, just indiscriminate. You know, the, the ends justified their means. And their ends mm-hmm. were tracking down, uh, you know, these major players and Tracking then, down the bad guy tra- to get, replace him yeah. with the system that they want mm-hmm. to control the chaos. Yeah. Right, so Kate Mercer is brought along to Juarez, Mexico. She meets Benicio Del Toro's character, who is basically a complete enigma almost the entire movie. It's kind of like a shadow or like yeah. a shade. Very, kind of very interesting yeah. character and my favorite Benicio performance since Traffic. Oh, hands down. He, yeah. It is my favorite Benicio <laughs> That ever been Benicio? Yeah, he, he yeah he, he had a very mesmerizing presence in this movie, and um, he seems supernatural without being, you know, without too, being supernatural, without being, while, yeah. while seeming like a real assassin. Yeah, he seemed like really a, a, like there are people that are just like this in the world, and that's what really scared me in general. It was that there, this is really, if I felt like this kind of stuff has to really be going on, and that yeah. that blows my mind. That stuff's going off the rails like this all around the world, and there are people who are trained for. 10, 20, 30 years to just be a hardcore assassin behind the scenes. It's just like, what a ridiculous concept for, you yeah. know, in general. But it's a reality, and it's a ne- it's a needed evil, too, to, you know, that that evil begets right. the, and the, uh, the worse evils. Yeah, yeah, the atmosphere and the world building, you know, and a lot of that is, is due to Roger Deakins' cinematography. Mm-hmm. But, um, and, and also Dennis Villeneuve, he's a master at tension and of of just of maintaining this oppressive sort of aura and um he did this in prisoners also and in his other films um but he's he's a very good director at um at, at just creating this foreboding sense of dread all the time and deacons has made a ton of amazing movies that yeah. you visually are stunning like what name a couple like there's the i mean he shot no country for old men mm-hmm. he's shot almost all the Coen brothers movies yeah you know? So that right there gives him huge amounts of cred. He did Assassination of Jesse James, which was a beautiful movie. You know, he he had, he's he's the second best cinematographer after Shiva. Um, he's good. I mean, it's and it definitely gives everything seems super real. He he lets yeah. scenes play out. Yeah. 
So you have to just sit there and be kind of patient with it sometimes. Yeah. But then everything that happens is purposed. Everything's really calculated. Mm -hmm. um, and stunning. It looks beautiful. Everything's really wide. And then, cl or close up. Yeah. Everything's super intense. Yeah. You know, kind of focused. Um, yeah. yeah, and the way he uses, like, creative, in this movie, he, he used creative shots, like, in that ending raid at night. Benicio Del Toro's character had black and white night vision, and the other people had, had green night vision. Mm-hmm how they were able to incorporate that with beautiful shots like the soldiers walking into the sunset. You know, the entire film, it really, it, it took a, you know, a fairly by-the-numbers script in some ways with scenes that on paper might seem kind of typical, like, oh, okay, they're raiding a uh, underground fortress or whatever. On paper, that seems like, okay, we've, we've seen that before, but the way it was directed, the way it was shot was was really inventive, and it created this tension in this atmosphere that I hadn't really seen before in a movie. So, you know, that just goes to show that film is such a dynamic medium, you know, that you can take one thing that's been done a thousand times before, but if you communicate through visual terms in a different way, it creates a whole new thing, it creates, it creates a whole new atmosphere and makes a whole new, and also, um, well, I'm going to get into third act things in a moment, but yeah. Yeah. But the point is that, um, with the cinematography and the direction, it really elevated a uh, a story that that could have been something not nearly as impressive. Yeah, it's it's a great example of it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Right. You right, know, right, they right. they could have if you had handed this to, you know, what's Michael that? Bay? It might, yeah, exactly, Michael Bay or James Cameron or um, you know, who who's who does a. Uh, Transformers, well, I guess Michael, Michael Bay. Michael mm. Bay, yeah. So that's that's exactly where I was gonna go with that. It would be so heavy-handed. You'd have someone in there like just guns blazing, and it would be like you know just a blockbuster popcorn kind of thing. And and in situations like that, it can look good. Uh, and they'd spend a ton of money on the explosions, and you know Emily Blunt's character probably would have had you know a little bit more scantily clad <laughs> she so, she, 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 had she, cleavage all the time she would yeah. have had cleavage all the yeah. time you know a lot, there would have been sex scenes she would have had a love interest you know there would have been tension between her and and it's and the, yeah, yeah like know, her and benicio del toro would yeah maybe been, they like, gotta lovers. have sex at some point cause to, <laughs> you know because they're just to, in the scene together and naturally that must mean that they these two people yeah. have to have yeah, sex yeah, yeah. Together. but they went the exact opposite and that's why the movie worked so well mm -hmm. to me is that you didn't know what was going to happen next. Your experience watching it is just like Emily Blunt's character being introduced. You're just fed little breadcrumbs along the way of the world that they're in, the yeah, situation. Yeah. Everything is shrouded in yeah. mystery, which totally. is another really smart choice. Yeah. That, and that's a character in and of itself. And that's why, I mean, you really don't get that Benicio Del Toro is the Sicario the, the hitman until the third act until the yeah until the third act until until you're already it's too late to go yeah. back and and so throughout the film they're tracking this uh you know they're tracking the kingpin's whereabouts they're trying to get his second in command into a certain position and in the third act and the point of view switches for the first time from emily blunt to benicio del toro yep and then we find out okay this is what he's here for he only goes where he can get vengeance for his daughter that was thrown into a pit of acid and his wife whose head was cut off. And you're like, oh, fuck, it hits like a ton of bricks. Like, mm -hmm. Of course. You know, he, he's just, and he, you know, you know, by Josh Brolin saying he's, he's, just, he's a force of nature and we're just here to control him. Mm -hmm. And that sets the stage for then what happens. He's in a car with this police officer. Well, it's a... He's kind of a mob guy posing as a police enforcer. Yeah. yeah. And that was another really smart thing. So throughout the film, we had seen little vignettes of this cop guy, or I mean, I'm sorry, of, of the mob guy with his family. And you realize that, you know, he lives in this impoverished area. He's just doing this job because he has no other opportunities. He kind of, through life circumstance, he's forced into this situation. Mm -hmm. And... You know, that's just the way of it. And so through circumstances now, he's in the car with Benicio del Toro, and Benicio is giving him instructions, keep driving, keep driving, pull this guy over, and he pulls him over, Who and the guy he, and the guy that the cop pulls over there is, is the second-in-command mob hitman. So Benicio gets him, he kills the mob guy posing as a cop, 
which is like a little mini tragedy in itself that you're and you know that's when you start you know that's when the film's ultimate thesis statement starts to come together you're like oh this is just sad yeah you know this guy was just in Benicio's way and he got taken down mm -hmm. and all he was trying to do is just revive their family so Benicio then gets his way into the compound becomes solid snake and yeah. takes everybody <laughs> out yeah and the th you know and the brilliant thing about you know about the film is that through the atmosphere and the tone everything that happens there when it becomes you know ultra badass it feels realistic it feels mm -hmm. like you know what this is it feels like it belongs in the real world but if you would take that scene even on its own if somebody just sees that scene without seeing the rest of the film they think oh well that's kind of you know ridiculous. Well, Jason Bourne-esque yeah a little yeah. bit but you know but the way it's built to that moment he could is, do anything is flawless and it, it felt real it felt it felt like this guy would exist in the real world that these things actually do happen yeah the grieving lawyer your wife do you think she'd be proud of what you've become Forget about my daughter. No foot person, huh? Kills his family in front of him. Yeah. Lets him finish his meal. Shoots him in the chest. Yeah. Awesome. And it was a mind blowing <laughs> moment. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't see him killing his kids in front of him coming. I thought it'd be a classic Hollywood thing where he kills the dad and then he just leaves. But instead, he does. When you think about it, it's realistic. Of course, he'd kill the kids. Yeah. Because he doesn't have any emotion left. And if he lets the kids li live, then they would grow up and then come after him. So he just wipes out the whole family then and there. Yeah. So it's um, it's a very brutally honest film. It's a. It's yeah. It, it, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, I, I thought it was brilliant how, they you know like you had mentioned in the third act, uh, you know towards the end of the flick, that's when we really get introduced to the Sicario, the Benicio del Toro character, because everything else is just, so you know mystical and kind of mysterious. You get a little bit of information from him and you feel like he could do anything. You know, he, when he starts just shredding through people with this pistol or his rifle or whatever, you're like, yeah, he's on a mission. You know, but then at the same time, I was felt leaving, uh, I, I left feeling empty, like the emptiness he must have felt after mm -hmm. he killed those people. Because the, what do you, you didn't really accomplish, you know, it seems like everything's been building up to this moment and then it's just over. And yeah, well, he achieved his vengeance, and then after that, what does he have to live for? It, you know, it's it's, it's not similar. like he it's not like he goes and then kills himself, or he finds the you know tragedy in his own humanity. I think he's already over that. I think he already years and years have gone by since his personal tragedies, mm -hmm. and so this character is like you know unfeeling, mm -hmm. like a robot, you know that can just do whatever need be done to get you know to the end of the line he has some shred of humanity left because of the way he treats emily blunt's character how you know he doesn't kill her when she comes all the, well then again of course he didn't kill her because he still needs her to sign yeah, the paper i was gonna say he really doesn't he really even though it seemed like he kind of was feeling for her not feeling for her like wanting to get it on well it's like that he, she yeah yeah it's like he says she she reminded him of his daughter. Yeah. But that's the only little part of humanity left in him that on a physical level, maybe some emotional level, he reminds her, but he'd still be willing to blow her away if she doesn't sign the paper. Sign the paper. Sign the paper. And no, I will not sign. I don't want to sign. Let's sign the paper. And you got the gun. Oh, it's brilliant. This is one of the climactic scenes. This is, that's more the climax of the movie than anything. This, you know, this partnership, this almost, we can't call it a friendship. But like the relationship between, yeah, you know, the audience and Benicio, really Emily Blunt and Benicio's character, um, 
it all goes out the window. Like, even if you thought you knew what was going on to this point, like they're going to be chummy chummy and ride off into the sunset together, they were never on the same team. They were never no, on the same no, side of things. And they yeah, never will. It's they a very, very dark be. ending. Yeah. Yeah. And that scene at the very end in the soccer field is the ultimate point of the movie that life is going to keep going on. People are going to try to look away from the darkness. They're going to try to play soccer and have fun. Mm -hmm. But just outside are these shots going off. Yeah. People are dying. People are getting strung up on under 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 a freeway have the, their, their heads cut off you know and that's kind of you know a metaphor for life itself that you know to stay happy to stay positive you have to ignore what's actually going on because if you if you think about it if you take it all in if you focus if you pay any attention at all to what's really happening then how are you going to even be happy oh. at all you know? yeah it's be because happy. it's kind of a departure from everything else that's available you gotta see this movie yeah. it's just yeah. it's too good not to not to see it.